Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry I haven't been back for a while, but I have had a really bad cold. I won't go into the gory details of it, but um, thankfully it's almost completely gone. Before I begin today, this is the finished box for the TS-100 soldering iron that we made in my last series of videos. It's got a, see the top fits pretty nicely. All the stuff, at least all I can find for it is in there, but at least now I have, when I find the other pieces, the other tips and things, I will have a place to put it. The lid fits on nice and snug. You can turn it upside down and shake it and it doesn't come out. That's that. Now, this is not going to be what I had planned for my next video, but this just kind of came along. As you may have remember from my last videos, we're doing some kind of unplanned remodeling. And a deal on some new appliances, well not new, new to us appliances. We're replacing our 20-year-old beat-up funky appliances with five to ten year old not beat up really super high-end appliances but um unfortunately when we got the microwave you can see this is the handle of the microwave door it's a Maytag microwave um, the movers the, the initial pictures was fine but the movers are somebody who disconnected it smashed and broke the handle and this is a complete piece of garbage handle this is completely designed for the machines that made it and for assembly line this is the handle and then this piece snaps over it to hide the screws and all the other ugliness of it it is horrible it really is an awful design um, and you'll see that it had noticed that it has let me show you it has a locator pin on each end it's broken out of this end but it's not screwed on at all it probably is there for no other reason than to hold it while it's on the assembly line until the screws are run in and we're going to make a new one of these that's why i'm showing it to you we're going to design one and we're going to print one and of course you'll see that the screw holes have this little leg on it and that's partially probably to keep them from and it it comes out at a different spot than the one below that's probably to keep them from putting it upside down it's probably also to keep this from spinning and breaking off when they ram the screw into it and also you'll notice that the um the screw hole boss and the boss for the locator pin are slightly offset about one millimeter from each other and that's again probably to keep them from putting it on upside down so what I want to do in this video is I want to take you along for something that I normally don't show and that is where I don't really know what I'm gonna do how I'm gonna design this I'm just gonna throw stuff up against the wall and see what sticks and the wall is fusion 360 and I got a couple of things I threw out there Let's take a look at them and let me go over them with you and we will, um, you can tell me what you think of them. I'll tell you which one I like. So I did three and I kind of did these in a way as if I was a different type of, um, a different type of builder. Say this first one, I thought of myself, well, you know, I have been a welder fitter and fitting meant, you know, getting a cut sheet full of parts and grinding them and cutting them and bending them until they fit. So my idea was to build this as if I had a piece of round bar. So I started off, I made myself two circles on the bottom plane. I extruded them. Oh, I also made myself another circle on the flat plane. Not the bottom plane, but the side plane. You can see it's um, how it's oriented with the others. And then I started extruding and I extruded the two bottom ones up a little bit, I think about 15 millimeters. And I have no, I mean, I have dimensions in here, but none of the dimensions are right. And because I'm just throwing measurements out at random, the aspect ratio may look a little weird. But um, then I extruded that center one out. And then I'm thinking to myself, how the heck am I going to connect these? So the next thing I did was I made myself some construction lines and then I went well you can't see the construction lines here for some reason but nonetheless I made some construction lines so I had an idea of where I was drawing and what I was doing and then I went up to sketch and I came down and I got the conic curve tool and it's here conic curve and I picked my center line of the side of my side of my pipe here and the center line of this one and I did the same thing over here so I had those nice curves drawn and then I came to the create tool and I came down to sweep 
and I told it to sweep this face here, this face here, along this path. And I'll show you what I got. Let me get a hold of it here. There we go. And I did one side, and then I did the other. And that's what I wound up with. So that's my first microwave door handle. Again, it has no holes in the... In the I'm just throwing stuff against the wall to see what sticks, see what I like. Um, and this would certainly work. It wouldn't be the prettiest, sexiest microwave door handle on the planet. But um, I don't need to know that we need a prettier, sexy microwave door handle. I'd still have to put the bosses for the screw hole in the alignment. But, you know, that's going to be pretty simple. So my next thought was, well, what if I was a machinist making this? What if I was starting with a block of steel or aluminum or a block of plastic or wood? So I started out with that idea in mind and I made myself a, a center diameter rectangle and I extruded it up. Now there's my block that I'm starting out with. I'm a machinist. I'm going to machine this out and get myself a, get myself a microwave door handle. So the next thing I did in this was I made myself some construction lines and I drew an arc. And that's probably not the arc I would draw. I'd probably come out a little further and make it a little a little less high and a little longer. But nonetheless, we're just throwing stuff out to see what sticks. And then I went ahead and I cut that arc through. My next step in this was to start filleting things. And I kept filleting things until I got something that I thought might be an acceptable handle. And again, you can see the difference between this, whoops, between this and this. And again, the aspect ratios aren't correct. I think the first one's too long and this one's not long enough. But you get the idea of the different ways to make it and how different it's going to look. Now, my third thought was, and I kind of looked at my, um, my other microwave, and I thought to myself, kind of like that handle. That handle reminds me of stuff I used to make out of the scrap bin at places I worked. Yeah, well, you know, look, we have a couple of plugs of metal. We got some flat bar. We got a piece of this and a piece of that. Let's see what we can make. So the first thing I thought I would do is I started with my two circles again. And, um, of course, I extruded them up. And then I thought, well, you know what? I found that piece of flat bar, so let's use that piece of flat bar. But we're going to have to bend the piece of flat bar because we don't want a straight piece of flat bar welded across the top. So I made myself once again some construction lines, and I took that pretend piece of flat bar, and I drew myself a curve. across. And this is just a three-point arc. And then I offset it. I think I offset it by 12 millimeters. And then I used the line tool just to draw a line in either end to close it. And then I extruded it across. And then I went back, of course, to my fillet tool, which you know I love. And I started filleting it until I got the final product. And um, let me get rid of the sketches. So there's that one. And that, you know... That might be a sexy microwave door handle. Who knows? I kind of like this one, this design. The wife kind of likes it, and that's important too. It's going to require, unfortunately, a lot of support material. I'd never like that, but at least the support material will break off fairly easy from this, I believe. And um, let me close off the sketches here, and we'll just compare all three of them. And... Um, and maybe you guys can tell me what one you think you like the best. And in, when I come back to my next video, I'll have made the decision and I'll have all the dimensions down. <clears throat> and we'll start like I normally would, like I knew what I was doing and I have all the drawing and the dimensions and everything. So there's the first one. Almost kind of looks like a towel rack, doesn't it? Or an old Volkswagen header pipe that goes between them, between the two cylinders. If you've ever seen one of those, that is. And that... And that, and I'm leaning kind of towards this one. But anyway, that's the process I go through when I start designing things. My wall is Fusion 360. For me, that's a lot easier than trying to draw things because I'm a terrible artist. But um, that's what I do before I come and begin a normal video or before I become and before I begin a, a, a normal design process. 
I throw a bunch of stuff out there to see what I like, and this is how I do it. So I hope this has been of value to you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If I've helped you out, please consider clicking on my affiliate links below. And in the next video, we'll come back with the one we all decide on, or the one my wife decides on probably more likely, and we'll get it designed with the proper dimensions, and we'll get it printed, and we'll see how it works. Thanks for stopping by, and thanks for watching. See you later. Bye for now.